For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The devil has a lie. He will lie to you and tell you that after death you'll be okay. They're in a better place. A rest in peace. And yet the Bible says that God says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We stand here, try to stand here week after week to tell you about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is more important than commerce. Jesus Christ is more about eternal life. For a bunch of people called humans that will die. And you will die. And you may die much sooner than you believe. Death is unknown as far as time, but we do know it's coming. You wouldn't want that, sir. You, you would not want the torments that God speaks about. For God so loved the world that you can be saved from hell. And you speak as a fool. For who wants to burn? Who wants torment? Who wants pain but a fool? Who doesn't even know how to cut his hair? Fools deny that there is a God. Fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And yet death is coming for all of us. We don't know when. And yet the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. They know they're going to die. They buy life insurance. They set up accounts for their family. They even buy their own burial plots in the stone, in the caskets. They prepare. And yet, they will not prepare for death by coming to my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And some may not know. Some may have no idea what God has determined for your life except those that believe the Bible and those that are saved go to you and tell you about the gospel we're here to tell you that death is not the end as a matter of fact death is only the beginning when you close your eyes to this world you will open your eyes to eternity without time and the Bible says that there is life after death. But the Bible says that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And as far as heaven, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As far as hell, you do whatever you want. Whatever you believe. You just reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you will die and wake up in a place called hell. That's the conditions. To go to glory by Jesus Christ. To go to hell, reject Jesus Christ. And God has sent forth His Word to tell you something you may not know. That Jesus saved. And Jesus alone saves. This is the proclamation of the wonderful story of all stories that is not printed in the newspapers. This is the greatest headline of all headlines that Jesus can save your soul today. It ain't about a person winning a trophy. It ain't about Trump. It ain't about... What's going on in the Middle East? It ain't about America. It's about Jesus Christ and your eternal soul. And I'm going to tell you, if President Trump does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he himself will go to hell. And everybody in Washington, D.C., if they don't believe on Jesus Christ, and you will go to hell for not believing on Jesus Christ too.
If you're a Democrat and you don't want a Republican, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll save Democrats, he'll save Republicans, he'll save anybody that comes to him as a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are none righteous, no, not one. There, we cannot say we're good. Last night, there was a group of people, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. Because God's good is not the classification of what your good is. You can't even get two human beings to come across a word as good. Because what you're doing may not be acceptable to the other person. As what they think is good may not be acceptable to you. And yet God said, I will set the standard in the Word of God. And the standard relies upon Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Who about 2,000 years ago suffered and died and bled according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel that the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel that Jesus saved. And it's a wonderful news, not story. It's a wonderful event to be saved and to go out and tell others. People say, oh, you're too loud. They got to hear. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and proclaim to my people their sins, their iniquities. I want to make sure you cannot blot out the Word of God being preached. It's much more than watermelons. It's much more than oranges. As a matter of fact, the one that can save your soul is the one that made what you're buying right now. The money that you're using to pay for what God made is the money that God has given you. And as a nation, you keep rejecting the Bible, you keep rejecting God, you may not have no more money. You may not have more fruits and vegetables. God has been gracious to you in this country. God has been blessing this country wonderfully that He can remove, and He will. Look at the history, that's a foreign word, look at the history of Judah. And we are following in her footsteps. And before you know it, Babylon will be knocking on the door to destroy and kill. They talk about the walls of Babylon. And yet now America is deciding to build walls. You will not keep out the enemy of God if God has sent those enemies to come in unto us. Because you have rejected God and His word. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And America is wicked. When you violate the relationship that God has set for a man and a woman to say it's okay for two men and two women and say that's proper, you have sinned. A sin that says, call the evil good and the good evil. Oh, we don't like that guy preaching the Bible, but we'll take any other sin. That's calling the good evil and the evil good, and that is a sin in the eyes of God. You right now are rejecting God. And yet God's long-suffering that He's not willing that any should perish. God's a loving God. For the Bible says God is love. And the love is that God has not destroyed you yet. But continue to reject Jesus Christ and He will pass His wrath upon you to the lake of fire which burneth forever. That is the final wrath of God. 
The Bible says God gives money, God gives riches. But you can't take that into hell. You can't take that into glory. And you can't take nothing to, to New Jerusalem if you don't believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. See, it's a wonderful thing, the news that's being preached to you right now. It's the news that Jesus saved. It's the gospel. Gospel means good news. And it's the good news that today, right now, you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can be saved today from hell. You can change your destination when you die. Because right now, without Christ, you are in hell already, according to John chapter 3. The condemnation is right now upon you, Christ rejectors. And you cannot say right now, well, I'm not rejecting Christ. Well, at the loud mouth preacher, you are rejecting Christ. And you are now found fault with God. Because we are preaching about Jesus, His Son. And the finished work that Jesus done by dying for your sins. And the fact is that you're not stepping out to receive Christ. You're not coming out to put your sins in His blood. To be washed of God. Is You are rejecting God. You are rejecting His offering. You now are a known child of wrath because we preach the gospel. You are without excuse. God has sent to you a loud mouth preacher that you may hear that Jesus saves. The condemnation is that you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I probably believe that most of you don't even have a religion. Most of you Americans are just going about, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm an American, I got money in my pocket, I've got food. But that's not good enough in the eyes of God. There are no Americans in heaven. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are blood-washed Christians. And a Christian definition is someone who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, not someone who has eaten or drank in His body. You Americans live so much at ease. And yet the judgment of God can come upon this country by rejecting His Word, rejecting His Son, and rejecting God Himself, that tomorrow, as Babylon, we could wake up in judgment. And by rejecting God, His Word, and His Son, don't you expect God to hear your prayers. America's wiping out her history. And yet the history is in the Bible that men that reject God will be judged. But there's one final judgment of all judgment. Your soul to be claimed saved or lost upon what you do while you're living. What you do when you're living to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or reject the Lord Jesus Christ, that will bound your eternity in heaven or hell. And that's what we're told to preach. We're not preaching no fairy tale messages. We're not preaching about flowers. We're not preaching about giving money to the homeless. We're not preaching about giving us money. We're preaching about the blood of Jesus Christ that can save your soul. And if you reject that message, he's too loud, he's intolerant. And in hell, you wish you believed. You wish you would believe that Jesus saved your soul. You see, once you wake up in hell, your life is not a video game. You can't press redo. You can't say game over and start it over again. That don't work. You don't come back as a cockroach. There 
are no virgins waiting for you. You're ugly enough. You will not find virgins waiting for you. You're to find the Lord Jesus Christ by the blood of His soul to save your soul. Mary can't save you. Your church can't save you. Your priest messing with your child can't save you. Jesus Christ is God approved. Religion is man made. And look at what man makes. Man makes something and he's got to put a recall message on it. Salvation by Jesus Christ has never been a recall. God has never had to send another book, another testament of Jesus Christ to say, oops, I was wrong. This has been the same message from the empty tomb that Jesus saves and Jesus saves alone. It has not been changed. You know what religion does? They take the Bible, they add to it, they subtract to it, they remove the blood, and they will be in hell. Man is wrong. Man is the sinner. And Christ died for you. Christ suffered on that cross, shed His blood, that you may have eternal life. We had a fool over here, oh, I got ringside seats in hell. And when you've been in there for one minute, you'll wish you did not be in hell. I'm sorry, the party in hell has been canceled due to the fire. There'll be no alcohol in hell because alcohol burns. And in the Bible, the Gospel of Luke 16, I just want a little drop of water to cool my tongue. There is no bottled water. There is no texting in hell. That's the damnation today. I got a text. I got to use my phone. There is no phone in hell. There's no love in hell. There's no mercy in hell. There is no grace in hell. That's all by God who is love. And without God, you don't know what love is. Because there is no love without God. A lot of your marriages today, oh, we've been married 50, 60, 70 years. You're just dragging along. But if you love in the Lord, there is sacrifice. Because Christ is the sacrifice. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Preacher, preach more love. You don't know what love was. I just told you about love. The love of God is Jesus Christ. God made you. God loved you. You disobeyed against God and God says, I'm going to give them the remedy. Now you want to believe the Big Bang. The Big Bang's yet to come. Mother Earth will be burnt. God will take this Earth, this planet, your mother, and He will destroy her. God is holy. And you have to be holy. And you're not. Your thought life is ridiculous. Your inventions of your heart while you sleep are sin. Jesus said, For whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery. You look at that woman in the swimsuit, you have committed adultery with her with your thoughts. Pass that on to your boyfriend and your husband. Sin doesn't have to be an act. It just has to be thought of. I'm going to kill that guy. I am so tired of him. I'm going to kill him. You are being charged with murder. You're going to stand before God and say, I'm righteous? When he plays back everything that you thought in your lifetime? How about what the Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew that every idle word will be repeated. Every idle word that you will give an account of. All those stupid jokes are going to stand before God. 
all that talk about that race car driver is going to stand before God. The only words that are not idle words are the words that come about Jesus Christ and come from the Bible. Those are not idle words. What you're talking about right now, behind your booths, on the other side of the street, that's idle words. What I'm talking about on this side of the street is holy, righteous words that God is pleased with. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. The love of God stretches out to a, a body that will never sin again when you die. That after death in Jesus Christ, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, after death you'll have no more pain. I said after death, not, not in this planet right now. Salvation today will not relieve you of your pain. Salvation today will not relieve you of your troubles. You may get more. But when you enter into glory by the blood of Jesus Christ, sinlessness, when you enter into glory by Jesus Christ, that wheelchair will never need to be needed. But not right now. Not right now. See, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you change your, defini your, your destination by death. But you'll still have your troubles if you get saved today. But in the eternal life, no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no tears. Forever to be with the one that loved you. You can't say that about anybody on this earth today because they don't love you. Because I already told you, God is love. And most of the people you're with in, in this world don't know God, they don't know love. The Bible says as far as a husband and wife relationship, true love is as the Lord loved the, the bride, the church, so a man ought to love his wife and lay down his life. The biblical love is you lay down your life for the brethren or for your wife. Christ laid down his life for you and you're rejecting it. And I know you can hear me. And I know one day you'll hear God. I prayerfully hope that you have listened to the words and believed on the words. Today may be the last day. It was for somebody already. There are people that never woke up this morning. They are in heaven or they are in hell. And if they died without Christ, you put all the RIPs on you want on that tombstone, they're not resting in peace. And yet, if someone, if you were to die in Christ, the Bible speaks about being absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now, I don't know how quick that is, but it's quick. The Bible says that in Christ, if you were to just close your eyes to death, you are with Jesus Christ. That quick. That's the blessed hope. That's the eternal hope. It's Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible says, if you die without Christ, you die. And you're buried. And you wake up in hell being in torment. Gospel of Luke chapter 16. And just because you don't believe in God, and you don't believe in hell, you think that's going to change God's mind? You think your pea brain's going to say, oh, God's going to, oh, okay, you don't believe in it, fine. God has never asked for your opinion. God has set forth the standard, and that standard's by Jesus Christ. 
the righteous, which you are not. Oh, preacher, you're offending me. I don't care I'm offending you. I am preaching the truth. May you break through your offense and believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Because death is coming. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Why are you tormenting us week after week after week? God thinks it's blessing. God thinks it's wonderful. God says, I have beautiful feet. I hope a Christian got that. You want to say, people, you wouldn't understand that, but I hope there's a Christian here that has enough sense of the Bible to know what I just said. For those that are Christians and say, oh, I don't like what he's doing. I got beautiful feet in the eyes of God. God approves of this message. And God will approve of you if you were to believe on Jesus Christ, the Savior. The mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Religion won't fill that gap. Imagine coming today I want to get some tomatoes, I want to get a watermelon, and some fresh green beans, and I've got Jesus Christ as my Savior this morning. I got my watermelons, I got my produce, and I also got eternal life. And I'll tell you right now, if you want to get eternal life today, and sit down with that produce, and thank God for your soul, and thank God for the fruit that you got, that will be heavenly tasting fruit that you bought in Christ. Right now, it just tastes like uh, it's just bought with money. I deserve it. Everything tastes better with Christ. You're grumpy and you're angry at us because you don't have Christ. I'm happy and joyful and rejoicing in the Lord because I have Christ. I'm the joyful one. You're the grumpy one. You want me to come over to your side of the street? Yeah, right. I wish you shut up. We're so happy over here. Ah, hallelujah, glory to God, I've got joy down deep in my heart. I am washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a big difference. Big difference. Joy does not come from your God, Satan. Satan don't even know what joy is. It's not in his vocabulary. But all oh, through God, through Jesus Christ, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, righteousness, holiness, name written down in the last book of life, dying and being with God instantly. That's the joy of the salvation of Jesus Christ. And you are not right with God if you have not believed on Jesus Christ. Don't you dare say, I'm going to heaven, and you never trusted Jesus Christ. Don't you even dare think that. Because that's a lie from hell. You say, well, how are you getting to heaven, preacher? By the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that Christ died for my soul, died for my sins, according to the scriptures, and they buried him. And he arose again three days and three nights according to the scriptures that Jesus Christ is righteous. That's how I'm getting to heaven. There's no other way. I can't come to God and say I'm good because I'm not good. I can't come to God and say I'm sinless because I am. What I've learned by growing in the Lord. But you can't get that. The Gospel of John says you can't receive the Holy Spirit because you have not received God's Son. You have not put your faith and trust in Jesus. You've got to step out by faith. 
to grow. You're not going to get anything from God till you believe on Jesus. There are no promises outside of Jesus Christ. Oh, wait a minute. I take back. There are two. There are two promises given to you outside of Jesus Christ. You're going to die and you're going to end up in hell. That's two promises. Go ahead. Keep them. I advise you not to. That fool that said, oh, i got front seats in hell. Man, if I start a fire here, I want you to sit in this fire. He wouldn't do it. If he did, he'd be a fool. So would you be a fool by knowingly going to a place that burneth forever? By the way, hell becomes the lake of fire. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible already says that you, most of you, will reject Him. Jesus Christ is not even wanted outside of those barriers. You see, that farmer's market over there does not want Jesus Christ. Even though I'm a tax-paying citizen in Daytona Beach, Florida, Jesus Christ is not allowed over in the Daytona Beach farmer's market. And yet the people in the Daytona Beach farmer's market are going to stand before God and God, they're going to expect, God, oh God, let me into your heaven because I'm good. God's going to say, hey, you wouldn't let me into your heart. I'm, I'm going to reject you. As much as they will not let Jesus over there, if you don't have Jesus, God ain't going to let you into heaven. He'll keep you out. See, the world can reject Jesus today. And God will reject them. And the farmer's market will say, okay, come on over here. We'll let you over here. We'll give you a booth. We'll let you do it. Like if you came to God and said, God, I'm a sinner. I need your son. I need the blood. And God would say, okay, come on over. See, we need permission to go over there. You need permission to get to heaven. And that permission is sought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says that as far as the blood of Jesus Christ, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No blood. No salvation. And I'm not talking about the blood of, of Christians. That's murder. Islam is murder. And by saying that, they may kill me. But Jesus Christ gave His life, shed His blood that we may have eternal life. Islam's got it backwards. Religion sheds blood. Christ gave His blood. There's a big difference. The blood of Jesus Christ is pure and spotless. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You need a Lamb to be saved. But that Lamb that you need does not go ba of ba. That Lamb that you need said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. When was the last time you heard that in your church? When was the last time you heard that Jesus is the only way? Salvation into heaven is only by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. And yet I look around at all these ministry of these men's names that can't save you. Joyce, Joel, all these ministries, Hen, those names can't save you. They can't do nothing for you. 
and they may not even be known in heaven. Are you going to trust a man's name that may not be in heaven? How about a name that is in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ? How about a name that's known of God and by God that is God, Jesus Christ? Acts 4.12, there is no other name given amongst men whereby ye be, must be said. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the name that pleases, is the name that saves. Even when you get angry, you use the name of Jesus as a curse. Your heart knows about Jesus. Without Jesus, it's hell. It's that plain and simple. And yet, salvation is so simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Come on, ask those vendors that you're dealing with, what is their joy? You handing them money. That's their joy. Their joy is you are giving them money. You are buying their stuff. That's their joy. They are not happy if you're just walking around browsing. They don't like you walking out of there with empty arms. You don't make them happy. When you don't give them your hard-earned cash, they are unhappy. And when you don't come to God by Jesus Christ, you make God angry. See, you don't come to God with cash or money. You come to God by the precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. If you don't have Jesus, you make Him angry. When you walk around on this planet not having Jesus, God's angry. John the Baptist said in John 3, 36, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Without Jesus Christ, don't think you please God. Without Jesus Christ, without Jesus Christ, you got the wrath of God no matter what you believe in. Your mind will go crazy in hell without Jesus Christ. You wish you could get out of your mind. But you won't. Whatever you're believing on cannot settle the mind. Chapter 1 of Timothy, God has given us a sound mind by Jesus Christ. You can't shut up with the Word of God. It's a blessing thing. It's a wonderful thing to preach Jesus. Jesus saves. Glory to God. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. What greater thing to preach Jesus saves. Glory to God. See, you got, you got a person that God sent that loves Jesus. And all you do is encourage me more and more. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for April 21st, 1987, when He came into my life and washed me of my sins. He didn't come and sup with me. He didn't come and say, you're a good person. He didn't come and say, oh, come on, homeboy, let's go meet God. He came in and washed me of my sins. 
He said, I'll take all that filth. I'll take all that wretchedness. I'll take all that iniquity. And I'll wash you in my blood and make you a child of God. And then I'll give you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, which has never left me. I've left the Holy Spirit. i left God many times. But oh, they haven't left me. Overfill you. He's overfilling me now. See, people that love the Lord speak out are rejoicing. I wish he'd shut up. Yeah, I want your religion. I want your re I want your grumpy religion. I want your religion where you gotta buy it for money. God gives praise. We've seen all kinds of people come up here today praising God and dancing and loving the Lord. How you doing, grumpy puss? I wouldn't serve a God that was grumpy. I came from Roman Catholic. You know what Roman Catholic means in the Latin? Grumpy. Yeah. You go to any Roman Catholic. I know, my whole family's Polish Roman Catholic. If you're grumpy, you don't have God. And I don't want your God. And you know what? I don't see you guys out here proclaiming your your whatever you're believing in. I don't I see, I see one sign, maybe a couple. I don't even see you promoting what what's making you happy. I don't see a big flag or banner with a with a George Washington one dollar bill. I don't hear someone saying peanuts, watermelons. But you hear someone saying Jesus. I guess you don't have happiness. I guess you don't have joy. I guess you don't have a song in your heart that Jesus saves. Blessed watermelons can be yours for a great price. My watermelons are better than yours. But Jesus, what can wash me of my all my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You know how many hymns there are about Jesus? How many hymns are there about produce? How many hymns are there about your miserableness? How many hymns are about your drugs, your alcohol? How many? And how many there will be after you die? There are no commercials after you die. There are no jingles in hell or heaven. And yet, in heaven, the Bible says we're going to praise the Lord Jesus Christ with song. There'll be no Clydesdale horses in hell. It's not beer time in hell. But it's Jesus all the time in heaven. What you are relying on as far as the worldly means will not be there in eternity. What I'm relying on is not a worldly means. It's a heavenly. And it will be there when I die, Jesus. Eternal life is sought by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's eternal. Marijuana won't be in the afterlife. You're not going to have beer when you die. You may have a doctor where you go. There are saved doctors, there are unsaved doctors. But he's not going to be able to treat you. You may have a pharmacist where you go, but he won't be able to dispense you any medication either place. In heaven, you won't need it because you got a new glorified body. In hell, you're going to want it, but it's not available. 
See, God's mercy as far as pain goes, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ when you die, all that pain is removed. Definitely gone. Bye. See ya. Don't even remember it. Oh. But without Jesus Christ, the pain is eternal. It's called torment. Forever. The glory of God is not you, it's Jesus Christ. You're not good. There are none good. No, not one. You will not step up to God with your credentials. Because when you die, you have no credentials of yourself. The only credential that you can carry when you die is Jesus Christ. That's it. You say, well, what about your preaching? I do it for Jesus Christ. Come on. Even when I get to heaven, there's nothing about me. It will never be about me. It will be about what Jesus Christ has done. Everything about me burns up. Ashes. Unless you die with Christ, you will not go to you will not go to heaven without Christ. You can't, because God has set a standard. He says in His Word, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." And you are not holy. You can't be holy without Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the righteous. You got a problem with sin. We are all sinners. But there's one sin that will put you in hell, and that sin is rejecting Jesus Christ. That's what puts a man in hell. What will separate you from a murderer? What did you do with Jesus? What would separate you from a child molester? What you done with Jesus? What will separate you from that nice little old lady at the grocery store? What you done with Jesus? You see that murderer, that child rapist, that little old lady? If they do not believe on Jesus, they all go to the same place. Hell. Because the main sin is rejecting Jesus Christ. That sin will put you in hell. Because you're a sinner. Now, if you stolen, if you lied, if you had wicked thoughts, you bring those sins to Jesus Christ, He will cleanse you of your sins. He will wash you, make you clean. And in the eyes of God, by Jesus Christ, you will now be righteous. And then you can sing, what, what sins are you talking about? If you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and wash you of your iniquity. Nothing can cleanse sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And I look at many of you, I know what God's going to say to you. You can't know that. Yes, I can. I know what God will say to you. I believe it's Matthew 7. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Lord, I went to church. Lord, I gave money to... Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. See, if you will not give heed to the gospel that we preach, God does not know you. Now, as far as God knowing me, my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know that for sure. Now, whether I've been faithful enough for God to call upon my name, I, I don't know. But my name is known of God by the Lamb's Book of Life. You can think you're saved. You can think 
you're right with God. You can think what you're doing is going to work. But the Bible says that these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know. I don't think. When I think, I get into trouble. But I know God saves through Jesus Christ. I'm such a sinner when I think I stink. And salvation is not on opinions. It's not what you think. It's not what they think. It is what God has said. You people don't realize what the love of God is by sending people like us out to you. This is the love of God. And the pleasure and the, ple and the, and the sweetness of serving God. You don't realize last week God had me chase away some wolves that could have deceived you. They could have damned your soul. You know what I found out about that wolf this week? I never knew this, but they believe that everybody will get a second chance at the judgment, at God's judgment, whatever that last judgment is for them. I'm not going to give them your name. I'm going to tell you what religion says. Religion says you can get a second chance. God says no. You get one chance. Now you may be here next Saturday to hear me, but you don't know, do you? I may not be here. God may allow Satan to send one of his ministers here. You might believe him. He might set up a beer and hamburger table. That's going on in churches. He may put a bouncy house for your children. In the name of Jesus, of course. But he won't preach the truth and he won't tell you what God expects from you. You better thank God that you're hearing the message of the Bible, the Gospel. Most of your churches in Daytona are not doing it. And the Gospel is that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And He was buried. And He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures that you might be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There are wolves all around. They don't have this message. And the fear is that the Bible says you will fall for them more than you will fall for grace of Jesus Christ. The love message that you want is Jesus saved. The love message that you desire is that God sent His only begotten Son. For God so loved the world. That's the love message. The condemnation is we're all sinners. I am a saved sinner by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a lively hope. And that's in Christ. If you don't have Christ, you're a lively dope. You're a living, but you're a dope. You're a fool. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. God said that so much, he put it twice in the Psalms. And the first first, so you don't miss it. Death is coming. It will come. I'll tell you something that's more sure. Jesus is coming.
And here's what I think about death. For you, if the Lord came tonight, you might survive the seven years. You might. And then you wouldn't suffer death. You would see the wrath of God coming the second advent. If the rapture would happen soon. There's a possibility you may see Jesus coming. If you see Jesus coming at the second advent, you are on the wrong side of God. Because if you were on the right side, you would go up with the rapture. And the Bible says if you are an enemy of God when Jesus comes, He's going to burn you right there, in, in, right where you're standing. The Bible says in one of the minor prophets that your, your eye sockets is going to burn up. That flame that comes out of his eyes and the word that comes out of his mouth. I never realized that. If the rapture would happen soon, and we believe it is, we don't know when. There is a possibility that you will see Jesus Christ coming on the wrong side. But one thing for sure, when you meet God without Jesus Christ, you are definitely on the wrong side. When you stand at that great white throne judgment, you do not get a second chance. Everything you thought, everything that you did will be made open before all. You know, you... At the, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to see some things in my life, I guarantee. Good and bad, but, you know, never mind the bad. For the Christian, there will be bad things. But most of everything I've done in my life are washed in the blood and will never be seen again. I've got some wickedness before I was saved and you wouldn't even listen to me. God says, what sins are you talking about? And when you die, saved by Jesus Christ. And Satan disputes the body. What sins are you talking about? He's mine. He's washed. He's my son. He's my child. By Calvary. And if you die without Jesus Christ, and stand before God without Jesus Christ, get that filthy sinner out of my presence. And at the great white throne judgment, the Bible says there'll be a great white throne judgment, the heaven and the earth are gone. You don't even have a place to stand. And then after all the wicked sinners that reject God are thrown into the lake of fire, then new Jerusalem, new earth, new heavens come down. You know what you get as a sinner? Not say You just get blank space before God and trial and pronounce guilty and the lake of fire. You don't even get a glimpse of heaven or anything. Judge not, least she be judged. The Bible says, I'm going to judge angels. And there's a possibility that you're going to hear this loud voice again. Maybe, I'm not sure. You can take this and throw this in the garbage can. But God may call me back to tell you guys at the great white throne judgment, I preached the gospel to you. God, I never knew. Uh, Brother Hay, will you step back up? It's the big mouth preacher. Yeah, Lord. See, he knows who I am. God's not charismatic. He's holy. He's not going to give you a sign. Because he wrote in the scriptures, Jews require a sign. You're a Gentile. You require, I think, it's wisdom. 
And the wisdom is we are preaching Jesus Christ. The wisdom is that Jesus Christ has been proved by prophecy. Jesus Christ has been approved by God. And Jesus Christ has been witnessed by His saints. The Word of God still stands. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Word. The only faithful promise is by believing on Jesus is you do not go to hell. And you do not want to go to hell. Who wants to suffer? Who loves to have pain? If you are in any kind of pain, don't take your pills. Don't take your medication. You'll be a fool. And then when I tell you that hell is full of torments, you won't take that. You will not believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. But you'll take your morphine. You'll have more faith in morphine than you will have in Jesus taking you out of hell. There's more faith in codeine then that the fact is there is a hell. And if there's no hell, have you or your friends told someone to go to hell? Hell is real. Jesus is real. And you'll really go to hell without Jesus Christ. Really. And you don't have to go. Hell is an option. Heaven is an option. By what you choose. You can get in your car, you can go to McDonald's, or you can go to Burger King. It's your choice. You can die and you can go to heaven or you can go to hell. It's your choice. But to go to heaven is by Jesus Christ alone. You must be born again. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to go to heaven. I didn't say need. I said must. You don't muster in heaven unless you come to Jesus Christ and take Him by faith. You don't approach God without Jesus Christ or it will be wrath. The wrath of God is that you have rejected Jesus Christ. Notice how many times I've mentioned Jesus. I hope I've used Jesus enough for you people that it becomes part of your vocabulary. I hope you wake up in the middle of the night, Jesus. All right, preacher. I hope I put into your heart Jesus. And even if it did show up in a bad way, why? Why don't people curse in the name of Buddha? Why don't they curse in the name of Allah? Because they're not gods. My God, by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me were the words of Jesus on the cross. That you, that you may turn eternal life through what Jesus Christ has done by being God in the flesh. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Are the words of Jesus on that cross. It'll be words that you will say in hell. When God has rejected you by rejecting Jesus Christ. That moment you wake up in hell, you are hopeless. You are godless. You are merciless. And you are lifeless. That guy just cried out, making fun of God. My God, my God, why didn't you say my Allah, my Allah? Why'd you cry on the Holy God, Jehovah? In your heart, you know there's a God. In your heart, you know there's salvation. That guy only proved what I was just saying. Men cry upon God, not Allah. Or whatever God. Because God is God and has been built in your heart that that God is the God that created you. No one says Big Bang as far as a cuss word. Oh, I hope one day you get the Big Bang. <laughs> no, people say go to hell. Because there is a hell. And we stand here that, and preach that you may not go to hell. The lively hope that rests upon Jesus Christ. The Son of God. The love of God. Who is God? The water of life. The light of life. The Alpha and Omega. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. My Savior. The Blessed Hope. Mighty Counselor. Oh, the name and the, the man Christ Jesus. For there's one me here between man, God and man. The man Christ Jesus. You the man? No, you're not. Christ Jesus is the man. And when they say our body's worth like $1.98 for the minerals and the stuff that's in it, if you, get, if you gather all the minerals and all the pieces of our body, it's like a dollar ninety-eight. If you gather all of Jesus Christ, you get eternal life. The sinless blood, the blood of God, Acts twenty twenty-eight, that giveth eternal life to all that call upon Him. Jesus saves, and Jesus saves alone, no other. Do not approach God with anything but Jesus Christ. It will not be accepted. It is not approved. You come to God with anything but Jesus Christ and it will be hell. There is nothing else that saves. There is nothing else that God will take. It has been sent forth by the blood of Jesus Christ. It has been sent forth by the Son of God. Your eternal soul rests upon what you do with Jesus Christ. And it may be now. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God says, come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Now. Because you may not have this afternoon. You may not even have the rest of this morning. There's an hour and a half left of this morning. You may not have it. Oh God. There you go. There's another one crying out God. Oh God. Oh God. That's in the Bible. Oh God. In despair and triumph. Oh God. That won't save you either. 
God, I said, oh God. No, believe. Salvation is wrought by believing on Jesus Christ. Death is coming. And some of you don't even fear it. That's the sh You're not even thinking about it and you don't even care. I feel sorry for your family. Not only are you going to attempt your eternity without God, but you're not even thinking about your family with death. With any form of insurance. You're a fool. I didn't realize how far that no fear went. But your fear standing before God and Son of Jesus Christ. When you've got the wrath of God abiding upon Him because you've heard the gospel and you will not believe. When you've heard that Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you've heard what Jesus has done for you and you have rejected him it's not the fact is you're going to anger God and have angered God it's the fact is where he will put you after death there's no second chance none but do you realize how many chances you've had here at Daytona Beach. I don't know how many weeks we've been here and how many times we preached, but that's your second, third, fourth, fifth, I'd say what, maybe 50 at least? You've had enough chances to, to get right with God. I believe we've been here for two years, two or three years. Probably two. When we've been here, try to be here, week after week after week, and you're going to tell God in the eternal life, oh, give me another chance. <laughs> You've had enough of them. What you're going to mean is, I know that guy's right now. I want to believe on what, G what he said. You can't do that. you got to take it by faith today. you got to believe today. I mean, how foolish would the lottery people be if they gave you the numbers tonight? That'd be foolish. And yet God has given you the means and how to be saved. And you're the foolish one that won't take it. And life will be real when you die. Saved or lost. It'll be real that Jesus is real and I'm with Him for eternity. Or it'll be Jesus is real and I didn't believe and I'm in this torment. And you know what the Bible says about you that go into hell? You want the real kicker? The Bible says that when you go into hell, you're going to want me to go preach to your family. That man in hell says, I've got five brethren. Will you go tell them about this place? And Abraham said, they got the word. Notice how he said, you got the word. If there's two things that a man in hell wants of you, he doesn't want you to come and he wants you to hear the gospel and believe. Luke 16. The agony as hell is that you've heard the truth, you rejected the truth, and there's nothing no longer you can do with the truth. No longer. And for you vendors here, it's going to be worse because you... You've been here, you've heard week after week after week. And you've been mad at the preaching of the gospel. And in hell, you'll be mad because you rejected the preaching of the gospel.
You'll be mad that the preacher with the Bible was correct. You'll be mad because God is correct. You'll be mad because Jesus is the way, is the truth, is the life, and you rejected it. And all the money that you made, what will it do for you in hell? What will it do for you in hell? You can't take it with you. The soul of a man has no pockets. The Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord as a Christian. The Bible says that he died and was buried and woke up in hell. There are no moving vans from this life to the other. Now you may bury it with you, but it don't go with you. And I can imagine one of the worst agonies is, is to hear the gospel. Hear what God wants from you out of love. And then know for without time that you rejected. And you may not want God's message. You may not want God's gospel. You may not want to hear what the Bible says. And you will get that in hell. There is no Bible, there is no God, there is no preaching in hell. I guarantee that. I guarantee it. But you're going to wish you listened to the God. You're going to wish you listened to the preaching. You're going to wish you got right with God. You're going to have your life without God. It's hell. And there's no pun intended, by the way, of that remark. I'm a very punful person, but that's no pun. Life is hell without God. Now, you can't say that this planet, this life is hell, because God is here right now. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, here's my family, we're gathered together in the Lord. God is amongst us. So this is not hell. Your life ain't hell because you don't look like you're on fire. I've had people telling me, oh, my life is hell. And they got pills for their... No, 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 no. You got relief. May not be enough, but still you got some relief. There is none in hell. Satan wants you to believe that, oh, this is hell. That's a lie. There is no mercy. There is no grace. There is no love in hell. The Bible says now. Now, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen a minute from now. I don't know what's going to happen in an hour next week next month, next year. I don't know. But God who wrote the Bible said now. Maybe you'll live another 30 years. I don't know. But there's been a lot of cases where people thought they had time. I wonder how many dead people left the to-do list unfinished. And the greatest to-do, number one on your list, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Many that can't not even be counted have died and gone off in eternity without doing that one thing. And in hell today, they're saying, Preacher, tell them. That's a kind of remarkable thing. 
I wonder how many people from this farmer's market here in Daytona Beach have died already. And to see if I can hell they know what's going on. And I wonder how many of them are in hell today and saying, will you tell them? And they're speaking out to you, will you believe them? Salvation by Jesus Christ as far as the heavenly view. In Luke 15, the Bible says if one sinner comes and repents and believes on Jesus Christ, they break out in rejoicing. We got a baseball field here. This place could be filled with people. Guy hits the ball, hits it over there. Ah! Yeah, so what? One man comes down and says, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you to wash me of my sins. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to put me down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And all the angels in heaven break out singing. Or saying, rejoicing. 